welcome to the case scenarios and this is your case number 4 where we will try to see how you should approach a clinical case scenario and how we can go about diagnosis without actually knowing the exact diagnosis and just going by the exclusion of the wrong options. So let's get started. Here we have a 67 year old Caucasian male who is complaining of progressive visual loss in the right eye. There is progressive visual loss. So you know I always tell you that the kind of vision loss, what is the kind of the vision loss in the patient serves the most important clue in making the diagnosis. We have got the differential diagnosis of the sudden painful diminution of vision, sudden painless diminution of vision, gradual painless progressive diminution of vision and likewise. So this is a Caucasian male 67 years having the progressive vision loss in the right eye over the past several months. So it is a gradual condition, it is a progressive condition. He has a history of hypertension and type 2 diabetes. So they have given you important risk factors also. We have history of both diabetes as well as hypertension. Current medications include the daily baby aspirin, hydrochlorothiazide, lisinopril and metformin. So this patient is having diabetes and hypertension which are well controlled on the drugs. There is a family history of the visual problem. So they are also telling you about the genetic predisposition of the diagnosis. He has a 35 year smoking history, very, very important, a positive history of smoking and admits to the occasional alcohol use. He is febrile with a BP of 137 by 82, pulse of 73 per minute. Cardiac and pulmonary examinations are unremarkable. So there is all said there. A neurological examination demonstrates the focal motor or the sensory abnormalities. The patient is asked to cover his left eye. So we are doing a test here where he is covering the left eye while he was having the vision loss in the right eye. So we are checking the right eye only by covering the left eye and look at a small spot on a grid made up of parallel, vertical and horizontal lines. And he says that the vertical lines are bent or wavy. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's complaint? Now, I think this is a very good uh, question where they are checking so many of your concepts and also a particular test is being done here. What is this test? He is seeing that the patient is seeing the grid of the vertical and horizontal lines and this patient is saying that these lines are bent or wavy. So actually it is the Amsler grid test. This is the test that they are talking about the Amsler grid test. This grid test consists of the grid of lines. We have both vertical as well as horizontal grid of lines which is used as a macular function test. Now can you see there are so many squares here. So it consists of 400 squares and these squares are 5 mm by 5 mm. We have got Amsler grid test, macular function test uh, for that it is used here. It consists of 400 squares 5 mm by 5 mm and can you see a central fixating point? This one is your central fixation point that we are using. Okay. 
So actually why we are using this Amsler grid test whenever we are suspecting some pathology of the macula, okay, per se we are using it as a macular function test when I am suspecting some pathology of the macula because it is actually uh, for testing the central 20 degree. Most importantly, it is for checking the central visual acuity that is your central 20 degree where we are using this as your fixation point. So now if you see, can this patient be having some macular disease because this person is more than 60 years, he is 67 years old and he is having the gradual, gradual progressive gradual progressive diminution of vision they have not given you any history of the pain so most probably it is gradual painless progressive diminution of vision now if i go about the dd the most important thing or the first thing that you should think whenever we have gradual painless progressive diminution of vision then that should be cataract yes we should think of the cataract they have also given you the history of hypertension, diabetes, which is controlled on the drugs. A very important history that they have given apart from the hypertension and the diabetes is the smoking history. Now, though the smoking can cause cataract also, smoking is very particularly related with the macular degeneration. So, there is a strong correlation between the smoking and the macular degeneration and the test that they are doing, they are not doing the slit lamp examination. For the cataract, we do the slit lamp examination, rather they are talking about a test that is done for the macular function test that is your Emsler grid test. So, that gives me some correlation that most probably this patient is having certain things which are related with the macula and they are also saying that the vertical lines are looking bent and wavy. So, it is something like this that you are going to get. Whenever you have some macular pathology, can you see these vertical lines? So, they are looking bent and wavy. These uh, lines looking bent and wavy, it occurs due to the macular diseases. Whenever we have some macular disease, the lines will be appearing bent and wavy. While we have missing lines in cases of optic nerve disease. So, this patient is more than 60 years also. He is having uh, diabetes. He is having hypertension. We have occasional alcohol use. We have a smoking history. Very, very important. Then we have a gradual painless progressive diminution of vision. Then we are suspecting some macular disease. That's why we are doing the Amsler grid test and this Amsler grid test also showing us wavy lines. So, very, very suggestive of ARMD. It's going in favor of ARMD which is a age related macular degeneration. Now, let's see the other options also before coming to the final diagnosis. The option number one is lens opacity. Lens opacity means they are talking of the cataract. Now, though cataract can also lead to the gradual painless progressive diminution of vision, there is nothing which is suggestive, any other thing which is suggestive of cataract. They are not talking about the uh, colored halos, frequent change of glasses, the glare. They are not talking about the slit lamp examination. Then they are not talking about about any other change if it is a senile cataract then we get so many changes of the senile cataract if it is a diabetic cataract then they should have talked about the uncontrolled diabetes they should have talked about the pre-senile cataract or they are talking about the snowflake cataract rather they are talking about the macular function test and it is also not normal it is showing you a wavy pattern that is suggesting the macular pathology so most probably it is not the cataract the second option is enlarged blind spot. Now, what do you mean by blind spot? If I talk about the enlarged blind spot, what is this blind spot? It is actually a scotoma. Blind spot is a scotoma due to the optic nerve head or I can say the optic disc. Now, if you look at the eye, 
okay this is your eyeball okay we can divide this into two parts suppose this is your nasal part nasal part and this is the temporal part of the eyeball now what is happening the optic nerve is found somewhere in the nasal area right so this is your nasal retina and this is your temporal retina and this area is your optic nerve head from where the optic nerve is continuing and projecting outside so because you know the fields are always diagonally opposite this nasal retina will cast the image in the temporal visual field while this temporal retina will cast the image in the nasal visual field it is something like this okay so now because the optic disc or the optic nerve head lies in the nasal retina what is happening this blind spot because you know this area is a vacuum there will be no image here so this vacuum will be forming a blind spot in the temporal visual field so if i am getting enlargement of this optic disc due to any reason i am going to get the enlargement of the blind spot also now what are the causes of this enlarged blind spot very important is the papal edema whenever we have the passive optic disc edema uh, due to the raised ict you have got so much enlargement of the optic disc due to uh, so much of edema it is said that the optic disc edema which is found in papal edema is about 7 to 8 times that of the optic neuritis so obviously i am going to get bilateral enlargement of the optic disc now when i am getting this papal edema leading to the blind spot enlargement i should have the signs of raised ict i should have the signs of raised ict what are the signs i should have the throbbing headache projectile vomiting amyrosis fugax transient obscuration of vision then i should have something which is suggestive of this raised ict whether it is due to trauma any history of trauma whether it is due to the tubercular meningitis or any tumor any space occupying lesion moreover because it's a optic nerve defect if you are doing the amsler grid test i will get the missing lines i will get the missing lines on the amsler grid and not the wavy lines that is suggestive of the macular pathology so most probably it is not the uh, enlargement of the blind spot because enlargement of the blind spot suggests the optic disc pathology optic nerve pathology while the amsler grid test finding here is suggestive of the macular pathology now looking at the other option third is the raised intraocular pressure now what kind of glaucoma can we suspect here this patient is having the gradual gradual painless progressive gradual painless progressive diminution of vision so what kind of glaucoma if i am suspecting the raised intraocular pressure then i can think of primary open angle glaucoma in these patients so if this patient is having the primary open angle glaucoma because this patient is more than 60 years of age we have diabetes we have hypertension we have got smoking and all these factors are also related with the open angle glaucoma but still this patient is not having the open open angle glaucoma because you know the amsler grid test is showing the wavy lines it is showing the wavy lines while if it is a case of glaucoma i will get the cupping of the optic disc and finally i will be having the cavernous optic atrophy i will be having the cavernous optic atrophy and i will have the peripheral visual field constriction in the glaucoma what is the initial changes that i am going to get initially i have the isopter contraction we have the constriction of the peripheral visual field and slowly and gradually only the central vision is left so what you are left with the tunnel vision 
also called as the tubular vision. You are left with the tunnel vision or the tubular vision. Only the central area of the vision is left. While here what you are having, you are having the wavy lines on the ampsular grid. That means only the central vision is affected. And central vision is affected in the lesions of the macula. If you are having the optic disc cupping and you are having the cavernous kind of optic atrophy, we are going to get the missing lines on the ampsular grid and plus you will be having the problem in the periphery. There will be constriction of the peripheral visual field and in the last what is holding with you is the central or the tunnel vision. So that means this is not a case of raised IOP as well. Are you getting this? Now coming to the fourth option that is the macular degeneration and this is the most probably answer. Now let us see what are the things which are correlating with this macular degeneration well. We have a patient who is 67 years old so that is more than 60 years. It could be found both in males and females and you have the important risk factors like diabetes, hypertension and a very very uh, uh, strongest risk factor I would like to say is the smoking. So this ARMD is very well related with these risk factors okay and what they are saying that when this patient is being tested he is showing the wavy lines on the Emsler grid. So that means most probably what kind of ARMD this patient is having. See we can have two kind of ARMD when it comes about age related macular degeneration. It can be a dry ARMD or it can be a wet ARMD. The dry ARMD is also called as the geographic it is also called as the geographic ARMD and that is present in 90% of the individuals while the wet ARMD is present in only 10% of the people. Now this is expected in more than 60 years of age, males and females are equally affected. So we are talking about the dry RMT which is more common okay because this patient is not having very very severe diminution of vision which happens in cases of the wet ARMD. So this patient who is having the dry uh, ARMD age related macular degeneration typically we have the drusens which are the eosinophilic deposits present between the RPE and the Bruch membrane of the choroid. Along with this drusens these patients also show the areas of retinal atrophy we will have the irregular pigmentation. So these are the changes that we are going to get in the retina especially in the macular area. The drusens are very very typical of the dry RMD. Then you get the trophic changes, irregular pigmentation because these changes are affecting the RPE layer of the macula. So this patient who is more than 60 years of age, he is having a problem uh, which is gradual, which is brainless, which is progressive. It is related with diabetes, hypertension, smoking and showing the bent or wavy lines on the ampsular grid is most probably the macular degeneration. So I hope you have understood why it is macular degeneration and also this is very clear that why it is not a case of raised ICT, why it is not a case of glaucoma, why it is not a case of enlargement of the blind spot. Thank you and happy ophthalmology.